if the Cherokee Native Americans were uh, black, why are they not so now? The racial changes in our lifetimes. This is their lens, the Cherokee Nation lens. And they were moved in a trail of tears to new territories. They were displaced. So why were they displaced? Who displaced them? And uh, can we learn something from the reasons why they were displaced? This is their seal, the seal of the Cherokee Nation. Pretty, very powerful and very interesting. The Cherokee nations had actually developed very much. They had an alphabet system that we are showing here. The Cherokee nation, world famous for its turbulent and colorful past, is home to a second largest American Indian tribe in the United States. So they are very, very important. Uh, this fascinating visual history that spans 14 counties of northeast Oklahoma from the Arkansas River to the Kansas border and features uh, the capital, we give you the actual pronunciation of this capital. Tashekwa, the U.S. government's harsh treatment of the Cherokees, culminating in the notorious Trail of Tears. So there is something more to this, because we, the harsh treatment is only reserved to those that are oppressed. And also we want to name it as racism best. Who were the original Cherokeeans? Who were moved across and oppressed like that? Were they like this? We are the Cherokees. Did America move people who looked like this? Cherokee Nation again says descendants of Cherokee nigger slaves and worthy of citizenship. So were black people not part of Cherokees? Can, is that true? This is coming from a report in September 2011 where they exercise racism. You go to Google, you get about 7.3 million results in 57 seconds of the same story from the BET.com, from Wikipedia, from various websites explaining why the blacks were denied and refused the uh, rights in Cherokee. The Cherokee Tribal Council also rejected Marilyn Van, even though she has ancestors who walked the Trail of Tears. So it's racism, straightforward, clear forward. Were Indians or original Indians, as they want to tell us, exercising racism? Or the mulattoes? Or the Europeans? Who has taken over? Who is exercising a racism? Yes. But these Europeans are called true native. Is that correct? Can this be true Native Americans, honestly speaking? Did Columbus find, when he got into America, did he find these people, these Europeans? Honestly, let's be very serious. In modern times, as Europeans, explorers made pictures of the flora, fauna, and peoples in places they traversed, they found the people inhabiting the Americans and made people who they found there. And these people they found there and made pictures of them were purely Negroid. Africans and Bantus. But now the question is, who taught you that they were no blacks in the Americans before the whites imported African slaves? Yet the images they drew and show us are of purely Negroid, Bantu-looking people. Do you believe European history now? Do you believe Western movies? Do you believe anything that contradicts that there's so many gray areas like this? Scientists we know have known that the Americans have been settled by Mongol Asians for only about 12,000 years ago, the Clovis uh, proof. Were they Mongoloids? Were they Asians? Why don't they say they were Asians? Why they, they call them Indians? We know that there is hard proof that shows otherwise. That long before that, perhaps 130,000 to go going beyond BP present time, and the more, there was an indigenous orthoctonous race that is found there. It was what others know today as black race. They called themselves Bantu or just people. There they are. There they are, the images of the authentic uh, people. This is science. This image came from Luzia, originally published by the Brazilian magazine Veja in August 1999. They don't look like Europeans. They don't look like Asians. They don't look like mulattoes. They look like pure, pure indigenous Negritos, black people, African Bantus. They look like that. This is Naya, 2015 in January in Mexico, America, first published in National Geographic magazine, looks like that. Authentic Bantu black people. These are the authentic people of America. No confusion. So we are now dealing with created history, with artificial history. Anyone who does not come to resemble this, whether they call them native, whether they call them Indian, whether they call them African-American or anything, they are not 
authentic. Authentic is like this. Black like me. Like every African. Like every Negrito you found anywhere on earth. Do you now believe DNA as proof for this? To define these people against your eyes? From European sources to know which race are these people are? But what happened? Let's look. And we know that a pictorial look of the Cherokee nation will teach us this. Will teach us the truth. Freedmen, children and racism, the Cherokee nation. We know she is authentic. She is a Bantu. She is a Muntu. She is authentic. And now we get narratives and journalists who write like this. To sowing division and showing confusion. So let's, let's see what they, how they write it. They say within the fabric of American identity is woven a story that has long been invisible. The lives and the experiences of people who share African American or wrong and Native American ancestry or wrong already dividing one people into two so that they divide and rule and conquer. African and Native peoples wrong language, wrong jargon, don't listen to this. Came together in Americans wrong. They were already together. They were one people. Over centuries, African Americans and Native Americans created shared history. No, they are one people. They share one history, not histories. They share one community, not communities. We are one family, not families. We had one way of life, not ways of life. We had one prejudice against us. We had one law, many twists as a people together. We are not divided. The only difference is that there was a group that came millions of years from Africa and inhabited and became autochthonous in America. And then another group came through slavery. And they are confusing the whole lot. And the foreigner who came via the Bering Strait and also how they were mixed. It's another story. There we are. A focus on the ongoing identity crisis of American Negro created by artificial history makers. In 1600s, they called us savages. In 1700s, they called us natives. In 1800s, they called us niggers. In 1900s, they called us darkies. In 1910s, they called us picklenies. In 1920s, they called us coons. In 1930s, they called us spooks. In 1940s, they called us boy or oh boy. In 1950s, they called us colored. In 1960s, they called us negroes. In 1970s, they called us brothers. In 1980s, they called us blacks. In 1990s or 1988, they called us African Americans. They still continue to call us names. Why? To confuse us and to give us our false our names. These are the orthoctonous are people, indigenous people of America. And this is the native who is a Latino, who is a foreigner. And this is what they call African Americans uh, today. These are the indigenous, original, authentic, indigenous natives, orthoctonous people, which we see in the day. We see a few changes. And now the tricks are coming. He is not. He is from Italy. And he is one of those who is chasing and uh, declaring that the Cherokees are not authentic. The indigenous look like that, straightforward with no question marks. They were Bantus, they called them people. This is the necroid type, a crow tribesman, 1873. Proper, pure African phenotype. That's what we deal with. Deal with what your eyes see, not with what you are told by DNA. We are not going to tolerate and accept that. This is a Comanche. He is not native. He is not indigenous. He could have been in America longer than the slaves that were important later, but he is not authentic. Pure, straight, clear, no complaints. They are authentic. These are two Cheyenne chiefs, 1924, strike our black people. The how the Cherokee Nation and all of us are going through a transitional period where we are being destroyed and neutralized slowly and easily. We see there again, we have seen how it is done now. They are changing and they are whitening them up. And today, the Cherokee people look like this. So when you people study history, they are basing it on that, not on the authentic, not on the original. There we are, how we have been replaced. Now this is a Cherokee. And now this is a Cherokee chief, a woman, female chief. How the mighty have fallen. How we have been destroyed. And uh, today, she won a prize as a Cherokee Indian from Tusa. They call her full blood. She is not. She is a European. She can never be an African or a Bantu. She is from uh, Europe. Unfortunately, just like many other indigenous people, peace-loving people, black Native Americans, 
the Sheroki and many others and all others did not keep a written history. They had oral, authentic history. And sadly, oral history against the current technologies is pretty worthless. After the third generation, unless there are guilds or griots that guard it and guide it. Unfortunately, this is what we have to live with. But fortunately, as divine would, hand would have it, European explorers made pictures of the flora, the fauna, and the peoples in the places they traversed. Therefore, in America, when they went to America, they drew the people they found inhabiting the United States of America who were Bantus, who were Africans, black people. Realizing their mistakes now, they are deliberately distorting everything by dragging in the suspect fallacious DNA proofs, planting false revisions of history, planting and teaching divisions, and raising scholars that planted divisions among us, the first authentic Bantus and the other Bantus that came later through the Atlantic slave trade. And there is a key that we are going to show you today. And in the case of the Cherokee, outright racism, outright racism against the black people and killing them. Here is our key and here is your key. Any picture that is not Bantu, throw it in the garbage if they tell you it represents the orig original American. Any explanation, whether DNA, whether blood test, whether anything is Photoshop, throw it in the bin. If it does not come up phenotypically as black and as Bantu and melaninated and charcoal. Anyone who teaches today, whether in America or black Hebrew Israelite or American tribesmen or anybody who teaches that they are different from Bantus, throw them in the garbage bin, don't follow them. They are divisive, they are dividing us. Any black person in Africa or anywhere else on earth who teaches that we are different from the indigenous Comanches, Cherokees, Arawak, any, any, any indigenous black person who teaches that we are different, throw that person, don't follow that person. He is, or she is teaching division. Whether she's a doctor, a professor or what. Never be distracted by such people. We are the indigenous orthoctons, not of Cherokee land only, but of the whole earth. I am not your cousin as other black Americans or African Americans or Indians wanted to tell me. I am you. Don't tell me that I'm your cousin. I am you. I am an American. I am an indigenous Australian. I am an indigenous Maori. I am an indigenous Papua New Guinean. I'm an indigenous uh, Vietnamese. I'm an indigenous Chinese. I'm an indigenous European. I own the earth is mine. Not small little territories. Not divisive territories like, oh, I am Zambian, here yeah, I am a Shirekian, here yeah, I am an Oninawa, here yeah, I am an Ojibwe, nah, and I am Nigerian. That is stupidity. We call it sovereignty, stupidity. We are one people. This is our key. Therefore, the Cherokee is me. I am a Shirekian. Me, as you see me, priest, teacher, rabbi, Elam Tumizulu, I am an American Indian. I am an Aboriginal. That's the teaching. That's what the Spirit says today and forevermore. That's what we must brag about. That's what we must grab. Indeed, we are one people, Bantu, Black. Whether you want to call me Bayogulia, Katabra, Biotak, Cherokee, Cheyenne, Chikoso, uh, Delaware, Comanche, Mahican, Menoni, Navajo, Nipmac, Souke, Fox, Shone, Sika, Wampogu, Otawa, Ojibga, Naragsense, Ilini, Huroni, Iri, Irokois, Pekoit, Potowami, it's me. Whether you call me Debele, it's me. Whether you call me Ibo, it's me. Whether you call me uh, Sudanese, it's me. Whether you call me Negrito, it's me. Whether you call me nigger, it's me. So this is Prestige Rabbi LM Tumizulu. This is my email. Get in touch with us. Subscribe to our channel. Hamid Iburu Ethics. Let's fight. Let's unite. Let's be one. Tatenda. Thank you. Siabonga. Salani Kale. Goodbye.